start. Um, so that's the subject. That's who's talking about it. And um, those are the pages in the book that we'll need. Okay, so we're doing student research today. So I'll be talking about what student research is, when and why we should use it, and some of the limitations. So what is research? Um, I think a lot of people have this idea that research is people, you know, head down in a book, um, cut and copy, and that's it. Um, it's a bit more than that. Um, and these are some of the key elements that are in student research. So it has to be clear. Um, we all know as students, everything has to be, as Ian likes to say, it has to be explicit. So you have to have a clear purpose or they'll go, I'm not interested. Um, so we have a question, and we're going to try and answer that question. Then, you know, scaffold it for them, give them a plan. Don't make it too hard on them. Um, they have to collect information, so it might be research, they might be doing some of their own experimentation, they have to collect data. And then that data will help us answer the question. And then you have to reach some conclusions. So that sort of plan can be used, and there's three general approaches for student research. Okay, you've got research based on finding. Um, that means that someone else has done the work, someone else has done the experimentation, the students are looking at their research, and they're interpreting it from that. So someone else has done the work. The second two, so research based on gathering, interpreting, and using information that did not exist before. So that's interviewing. I remember when I was in Apollo Bay, uh, we, introdu uh, we interviewed some of the people from World War II. Uh, one of them was a, an old lady who she joined um, as a nurse, and we asked her why she joined, to look at the cute boys. That, that was her answer. And she came back later and said, I want to change it, I want to make it something more patriotic. <laughs> but you can see how that sort of interviewing people that's really important, and it's, research isn't just about gathering data, it might be interviewing people, it might be interviewing Aboriginal elders, asking about their stories. Um, and the third one, uh, research based on some form of experimentation. So all the scientists here, we all know what that is about. Maybe maths as well. Um, I remember probably year nine maths class, flipping a coin 20 times, heads and tails. That's research. I've got probability then. So it's, don't think it's just, you know, Teach your time for a coffee, you guys go play the interwebs. It's not, that's not what it is. When and why? Okay, help students become independent learners. Um, these are skills they need later in life. Um, you know, helps them to ask questions, to investigate, to query. Um, It'll enable learners to develop a deeper understanding. So, I'm one person, I'm telling you this now, I've got one view. If you send 27 kids off to go and research something, you're gonna get 27 different opinions, different views, different ideas. Um, key skills, uh, you know, reading, note-taking, writing, oral communication, they're all important. Um, our research will help them develop that, especially you'll get the oral communication if, after you've done some research, you have to present it like this. Um, critical thinking and reflection. Um, you know, and to be sceptical. I think that's probably the biggest thing, being sceptical. Because um, a lot of people, you see something written down, you think that has to be true. Especially kids, I saw it on one website, has to be true. Um, Richard Wilkins jumped on the interweb one morning and he saw, um, oh, Jeff Goldblum's dead. No one's reported that. Ran with it. Um, at the bottom of the internet site, it actually said, this is a fake. Um, and he was happily living in California, not falling off a cliff in New Zealand. So <laughs> you have to be sceptical. Don't believe everything. Some limitations. Um, does anyone want to think of some limitations to student research before I put this up? Yep. Anything else? 
they might just choose Wikipedia to get the information from and not realise yep. that it can be tampered with. Yep. Mm. They might know where to start. Yep. Fantastic. If they're not supervised, they might just be supervised. Them. Fantastic. Okay, this is just some of them. There's plenty more in the book. Yeah. Very time consuming. Um, we've all done research at uni. We know it takes several hours to, you know, get something for a 1500 word essay. Um, kids who don't have these skills that we've developed over several years, it's going to take them just as long to do something for 500 words. So it is very time consuming. Um, most students, they won't see a point to it. They'll just go, I don't see why we're doing this, I don't want to do that. They'll be playing Quake on the web or, you know, throwing paper or chatting on MSN, they'll be doing something else. Um, very self-directed sort of learning. If the students aren't motivated, they're not going to do it. Um, some of the data might be hard to interpret for some students, depending on what you're teaching. And they'll see it just as another project. They'll plagiarise, um, they'll get their parents to do it, they'll copy and paste, you know, they'll do all that, and they'll make up stuff, you know. I can't be bothered flipping a coin 20 times, make it up. Okay, this is a bit of use it if, use it don't, this is just straight from the text. Um, so yeah, outcomes you want students to achieve are already related to issues beyond the classroom. So there's no point researching stuff that you can teach directly. Um, it has to be something that goes beyond the scope of the classroom for them to look at. Um, another important one is the, the last one. You want learning to be driven by students' curiosity. So you want to instill that in the students that learning isn't just about someone telling them. You want them to go out and find the information themselves. And here are a couple of don'ts. Um, they're not going to be. There's only a few. So, yeah, so you've got to build the basic skills first. No point just saying, off you go. Teacher's going to have a coffee. You need to be there, help them along the way. Um, if they have poor literacy skills, so students who can't read, they're going to have trouble gathering the information. Students who can't write may gather a bunch of information, but they're not going to be able to communicate it back to you. Um, and, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for that. Uh, listening.